and we are live. Okay, we're good. Mm -hmm. Okay, welcome everyone to the Monday, April 20th uh, caucus of the Albany Common Council. For the record, um, members present thus far, uh, Councilman Ballerin, O'Brien, Conti, Fahey, Johnson, uh, Robinson, War, uh, Igo, and uh, Hoey, along with Council President Ellis, uh, our legislative aide, Michelle Andre, and our Re Research Council, John Raphael Pichardo. Thank you. Uh, what I want to do is, is uh, just so we're not, we have a couple of uh, appointees to, my screen just went off. Can everyone see me? Yes. We can hear no. you. Can you still see me? No. Okay, because, no. yeah, my screen is connecting. That happened to me earlier, too. Are you good? Hmm? Can, this is not good. I've done several of these things and haven't had an issue. Everyone can hear me now, right? We can see you now. It's, it's your, your internet's going back and forth. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, you, we were going to uh, also, uh, did someone come in? Uh, Council Member Love is also with us. I heard Council Member, Member Farrell also. And, uh, and Council Member Anani. Okay. I uh, wanted to take the uh, appointees to the to the uh, to a couple of our committees first. They're standing by. Um, we'll start with uh, uh, Miss uh, Natisha Alexander, um, who will be uh, appointed to as a member to the Commission on Human Rights. She went through the Human Resources and Human Rights Committee uh, and came uh, through that committee with a positive recommendation. Um, did you? You, you, you don't mind if I cover for you, Mr. Robinson, do you go through this? That way, in the interest of time. Okay, so she came through a positive recommendation, um, and we have her, she, and she's fine. Okay, so Ms. Alexander, thank you for your interest in serving, and we're just looking for just a basic intro, just, you know. Sure. My name is, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. My name is Natisha Alexander. I'm a native of Albany. I grew up uh, in the Arbor Hill area. I went to all, all the city of Albany public schools from Arbor Hill through to Livingston, Albany High, and I even um, graduated from SUNY Albany, so I've been in Albany all my life. I'm very much so aware um, and familiar with the, with the city, with the capital region, with the residents. Uh, the needs of the residents in the different neighborhoods. I am a, I have 13 years of state service with New York State. I started out working for the New York State Assembly Committee on Racing and Wagering um, as a committee, committee assistant or a committee clerk. And then I moved up to be a legislative analyst. From there, I moved over to the Ways and Means Committee where I was a legislative budget analyst. And I worked on several human services areas such as um, the OTRA, um, Department of Labor, and some small agencies. Um, from there, I went to work for the Division of Budget, which is where I currently am now as a senior budget examiner. At the Division of Budget, I manage a $27 billion budget for the Office of Children and Family Services. So um, that is tracking and monitoring expenses and appropriations and cash for various uh, human services program, including Medicaid for foster care kids. My family is here in Albany. My friends are here in Albany. I love Albany. I just actually bought a house in the Pine Hill area. Um, so that's a little bit about myself. Okay, thank you. Any members have questions? Hi. Okay. Okay. Good, Ms. Oche. Uh, so I, I just want to say your resume is very impressive and I'm thrilled that you're willing to serve in this capacity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. 
Okay, with that, uh, no more questions. Uh, thank you, Ms. Alexander, uh, for being willing to serve. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Okay, no, thank you. Okay, Mr. Jackson around? Is he available? Yes, he, he was on a list of attendees. Yeah, He's he says he raised his hand. Says he raised his hand. Can someone uh, get him in? And uh, just for the record, uh, Council Members Flynn, Doshe, Frederick, did I miss anyone else? I have joined the meeting. Can everyone hear me? This, yes, yes, Mr. Jackson. All right. So, yes, thank you for being willing to serve. Um, and we're just looking for, you know, basic intro. Uh, from you, you know, why you're interested in the role. And then okay. members will ask questions. Thanks. All right, no problem. Uh, thank you for having me. A uh, brief introduction. I was born and raised in South Troy, uh, graduated from Troy High School, and was a former track athlete before going down to Morehouse in Atlanta. I studied urban planning and economics before starting in investment banking, where we primarily in public space parks, schools, and hospitals. I left that job in Chicago to come back home uh, about five, six years ago now. Um, and shortly thereafter, I uh, started my own development firm, which focuses on helping profits and charitable corporations open public spaces. Uh, that work um, is where a lot of my connection with the council has come previously, the American Cultural Center, um, and other initiatives such as Juneteenth uh, that we've done in concert with the city. And overall, I've had an excellent time in those exploits, and it resonates with the mission of the work we do at Blue Light, the African American Cultural Center, and other projects that I'm involved in. So I thank you for the opportunity to serve, and I look forward to working with you closer. Hey, before anyone asks questions, I, I didn't introduce uh, Mr. Jackson. Uh, he did, Mr. Trayvon Jackson, he did go before uh, uh, human Resources and Human Rights Committee, he also was voted out with a uh, positive uh, recommendation to the full council. Uh, any questions? Comments? Okay, with that being said, thank you for your time, uh, Mr. Jackson, and welcome. Uh, looking forward to working with you further. Thank you. As well. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, moving on to the agenda. Um, we have uh, two. Did someone say anything? Got a weird echo. <clears throat> okay. Uh, on the agenda, public, we have two public hearings, one for ordinance 33120. Um, by Mr. O'Brien and a resolution by Mr. Conti, 213120. Uh, we'll have those, we'll start with those two public hearings. Um, I, how are we looking for, uh, with uh, public comment or, or, or uh, for the hearings, um, Danielle? Uh, we're looking pretty good. Um, we have all of the public hearing comments in the PowerPoint. There isn't one that directly speaks to 21-31-20. Our most of the public hearing comments are for the ordinance that's before the council tonight, 331-20, MC. Okay, okay. And how many folks do we actually have that plan on speaking? Um, we have, let me unmute myself. We have three people that have indicated interest to actually speak. Um, and then several people that have provided written comments. Okay, which we'll, we'll read into the record. Okay, so that's, that's it for the public hearings. Next on the agenda, uh, approval of minutes from previous meeting. I know from the last caucus, we, I said we didn't have any, but we actually do. Um, we got those looked at, and I'd like to move the the 326 
uh, March 26 minutes of 20 and the 4-6 uh, of 20 meeting minutes. Um, okay. Just, I have just one correction on the uh, 326 minutes. Um, <clears throat> where it said, I don't have it in front of me, but where it referenced uh, a majority consent motion to take it up at the same night, that should be a unanimous consent. Okay. Unanimous. Otherwise, all right. Okay. Okay. Um, through local laws held, they're, uh, they're held. Um, uh, on to ordinances held, down to agenda item number nine, which is Mr. O'Brien's. Um, would you, Mr. O'Brien, uh, would you want to say something quickly? What I also want uh, Jared, excuse me, not Jared, JR, uh, to mention, to comment on the, that letter that we got yeah, from. I would ask for JR's comment. On, um, it would, first of all, strange coming at the last minute, but it would seem to challenge hmm. her. So I would ask for JR. Okay. Um, uh, it's very, it's, it's convenient that the um, Corporation Council send us this email very last minute. Um, myself, Michelle, and um, Danielle have worked very hard to be making this process with this ordinance a very transparent process. We have um, posted this ordinance entirely at all, all times, most of the, at all times on the website available for anybody to review. That's right. Including our changes to our most recent ordinance that was um, noticed right. at our last meeting. Um, we have been in meetings with the Corporation Council, and it's interesting that to this last day, this last moment, she has um, interesting, you know, some problems. The issue that I have is her last, um, regarding the retroactivity of the ordinance, yeah. um, the, the proposal for the retroactivity that came up at the last introduction, it came from a constituent of Mr. O'Brien's who was very well versed in municipal law, um, who I myself def uh, have a lot of respect for. Um, so I therefore not, saw no problems with it um, as well. I don't know where she's getting this site regarding the uh, Court of Appeals decision saying that it's deeply rooted, um, you know, as everybody's seen the um, email, uh, there's no site to it. And I don't know if she's referring to our Court of Appeals of the state of New York or the Court of Appeals of the Second Circuit. It's not clear. It's no site. Um, and that I, I just find this to be just really convenient that on the day of that we're tending to vote on this, that this comes up now and it was never discussed of any issues prior. And um, if I could also, uh, <clears throat> when we actually come to a vote on this, not during the hearing, but when we come to a vote, I'm also uh, gonna just make very brief comments about the charge about a conflict of interest. And I'm gonna read a letter from uh, uh, one of my constituents who is the land use planning attorney, uh, which uh, this whole issue that raised uh, about a potential conflict of interest. I don't believe there is any. Uh, I don't believe uh, that when a person becomes a council member, they in any way surrender their right as a mm. individual to challenge a uh, board's interpretation of a statute. Uh, if I had some pecuniary interest in- uh, I was going to say that. You know, in the uh, property, or if I had pecuniary okay. interest in the property's competition, that might be challengeable, but I assure you that I do not. My, uh, my involvement in a ch challenging the BZA decision was as a resident of Albany, uh, the same as the other five people who joined me in that lawsuit. Okay. And okay. just as a clarification, Mr. Mr. O'Brien introduced this legislation prior to his lawsuit. Right, right. And Any other questions, comments? Sounds good to me. If I could just uh, provide one 
point of uh, information, I guess. Uh, that that case that Marisa was citing from there, that is a New York State Court of Appeals decision. It's from Matter of Regina Metro Company LLC v. New York State Division of Housing and Community Renewal. Um, and that was handed down by the Court of Appeals um, on April 2nd of this year. Yes. Are you going to send us a copy of that? Um, we can probably provide you with one. Can you send us the site at least? Uh, yeah, it's, I only have a Lexus site for it right now because it's so recent, but uh, that is 2020 Lexus 779, but I can send that in an email. Okay, so the intention is to move forward with a vote on that uh, this evening. On to resolutions, excuse me. The rest of the ordinances are held. On to resolutions introduced. Um, we have, uh, there's three, and uh, Natisha Alexander, we just spoke with her. That'll be a pass, it's 334220. Uh, one for Mr. Oh, Trayvon Jackson, 30. Thirty-four, thirty-four, forty-two, twenty, uh, and uh, Miss Wilcox, who was with us at our last caucus, uh, appointing her to peg uh, access and oversight. That's thirty-five, forty-two, twenty. Those will all be passes. Those will be passes. Um, uh, next on the resolutions, thirty-six, forty-two, twenty, uh, by Mr. Anani. Uh, buy local, grow local. Some of the mic is open. Uh, that'll, that'll be a, a pass uh, through resolutions held. Um, we'll move to agenda item number eight by Mr. Conti. It'll be resolution 213120 which we'll also be having a public hearing for to this evening. That'll be a pass pending a positive outcome of this public hearing. Uh, and the rest of the resolutions are held. Does anyone uh, have anything or say anything? Where are we? Oh, nothing. No one? <laughs> okay, We're working on so, becoming uh, more efficient. Yeah. yeah I just, just want to make sure everybody is aware of this um, ACPAC virtual community forum tomorrow night with uh, Chief Hawkins. What is that for, Richard? Yeah. It's a community forum with uh, Chief Hawkins, I guess, to, uh, you know, an opportunity for the public to ask questions. I mean, I've had uh, people asking me questions about uh, what's going on right now with the level of police services and response and uh, community policing. So uh, ACPAC has put together this forum. It'll be interesting. It's gonna be a, a combination, as I see it, of, uh, of uh, Facebook Live uh, where people can uh, ask questions via that format and also telephone in. Uh, and I guess members of ACPAC members will be uh, answering the phone and uh, transmitting questions as well. So um, it doesn't have an agenda, but it's just a general community forum the way from what I've seen. Mm. I had some complaints um, from people walk, like walking in the uh, golf course that there's dogs unleashed running around there and you know there's a problem and then the other thing they brought up I guess there's signs all over the city that if your dog poops and you don't pick it up there's a $200 fine mm -hmm. and a phone number to call and mm -hmm. I'm told that the, when you call that phone number it's not it, it's not a new a working number so I don't know. Maybe that's something we should bring up at public safety. Uh, that you know, the dog stuff falls under that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm wondering. You know, there's some of the signs. Um, there are. I've noticed there are some old signs that have 
the city clerk's number on it when the city clerk had that responsibility, but then animal controls move over to the police department. Um, so I don't know, and, and there are signs with a new number on it. I'm not sure which number the particular signs you mentioned might have. I'll have to get a picture um, of it and I'll do yeah. that. Yeah. But it's, um, animal control is an ongoing issue, at, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Because we don't have enough, we really don't have enough people doing it and we don't have the responses we need. Yeah. I've, I've been walking, hey, Jair, I've been walking the golf course almost every day and I'm not worried about the dogs, I'm more about the, uh, nobody's wearing the mask on the golf course. 95% of the people aren't even wearing a mask on the golf course, so. But the dogs is, has always been an issue, but it's fine so far, as far as I know. Is anybody working over at the golf course, Jack? No, there's no, I, I've talked to mayors about that and there's no staff over there, except for uh, Roger Martel, which is like three people there. Mm -hmm. they're gonna, they're gonna open I do the think the cop, the cops. I will say this: the cops do oh, we'll the go end. there and and monitor it. You know, but I don't know if they're okay. 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 Of course, um, it should open up, right? Um, Mike. My, my, yeah. Um, my uh, my recollection is the only restriction we have on leashing a dog is in a playground area. No golf course it, exempt, right, Jr. Yeah, I think it is. I I don't think it we is. have a. That. It's the way the code is written is that it's required in parks and I'm not sure under the code if the golf course is considered a park. That's where that's where it's the it, is. it comes down the devils in the it, details. It, it is. It yeah. is. I mean, okay. When it's when it's not being used as a golf course, it, it's, it's in effect it's a park. Yep. And dogs are allowed off okay. leash in city parks as long as they're under the control, control of the owner. Uh, an owner or responsible adult. Mm -hmm. So and, technically and, the uh, Okay. Okay, Mr. Igo. Danielle told us that the uh, animal control is under her, not the police department. And she made contact to uh, animal control on Constituent of Mind's behalf, whose dog was attacked out there. And the only problem with the phone was that the phone line that rolled over to a full mailbox, voice mailbox, and that was clarified. But I believe that it's under her, and she can confirm Daniel, that, right? Danielle, can you confirm that? Because I thought animal control was moved over to the police department. So I do work with animal control. They come into our office. If a dog is seized, they work with our office, and we work with the police downstairs to get them the appearance ticket so that they could go to court to take care of uh, whatever fees and fines may, be, may have been incurred. But I work closely with animal control. Uh, on a regular basis. And if you have specific concerns, I have a contact person there and I can forward your email to them and they'll take, you know, they'll take care of whatever the situation is. Yeah, but I believe, uh, I'm almost positive that the um, animal control is under, falls under the special operations and traffic safety function of the police department. Perfect. So uh, while you work with them, Danielle, to try to help them work through that stuff, it really is still a function of, of the police department. So, uh, okay. Mr. Conti, I, my apologies. I, did you have something, Richard? No, no I missed okay. it. Uh, I, President I, Ellis, you, Mr. Ellis, President Ellis, you, you yeah. have, uh, no, I thought you wanted to say something. Up. Okay. I'm just trying sure to. Sure it is, I can see it up. Cause I used to could see everybody at one time and I can't anymore for the meeting so I could see who raises their hand. So everybody's on three different screens and before I could see everybody. So did, what do you have your view on? View? What's the name view? Yeah. It's on the correct view, I don't know. All right, I think that's user error. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and I can't remember if I did this on my laptop last time rather than my my tablet i think well, that on your tablet it. it limits it to four so yeah that's what it is better. it's my tablet yeah. see user error <laughs> <laughs> what should we do then if we want to talk raise your hand okay you can see it though 
No, there's a function called raise your hand. The fun there's a function called raise your hand. Oh. Where if you go into participants, it should be at the bottom, and you say, see a hand, and it raises it, and then I can see it in the participant box. Oh, there you! I saw Kathy raised her hand. What? Um, there I just you go, Tom. To mention, I saw you. Can I speak? Oh, uh, I just wanted to mention that um, the other night at the historic at the Historic Resources Commission uh, meeting. There was an excellent presentation, uh, and I think Judy and Richard were listening in, I don't know who else, uh, on um, the procedure for making the decision about uh, whether to or not to demolish a building. It's, um, uh, it's been just an ongoing concern about how we're losing so many of our, uh, many times it's our historic buildings, but just, uh, you know, just our buildings in general. So it was really helpful to hear um, the conversation between Chris Spencer, Rick LaJoy, and uh, members of the Historic Resource Commission uh, have a conversation about this. It was a very full discussion, um, and I, I, I'm going to contact them to see if we can get a copy of the presentation, because it was done online, you know, through Zoom, and I think it would be really helpful for all council members if they're interested to have an opportunity to listen in. Um, is there a requirement that that a lot of issues were raised uh, you know about what can we do better uh, very helpful that's all it, there, is there a requirement that that video be uh, like archived or preserved online that's a good question I, I certainly hope that they they have that I mean just in, in terms of what we're doing here the same rules would apply which so, um which um bo body was it? Can you remind this me? This was Historic Resources Commission. All all public bodies of the city of Albany are required to comply with the Executive Order 202.1, where just like we are, everybody's supposed to comply with it. And what does that say as far as uh, making the uh, the video of the meeting available or available online or archived? It has online? to be recorded and live. Actually, it says people should be able to access it live, just like we are doing Oops. it. So. It, it was it was done live online, but, but if people wanted to go back and see that, is it available? The recording available or required to be available online? Michelle, can you check on that for us? Can can you check on that for us? Yes. Make sure that's available. I did it is available um, on Facebook and also um, on our YouTube as far as recording wise. Right, ours are. Yeah. 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 This is for the Historic Resources Commission meeting. Okay. Thank you. So I also could not access a gallery view um, during the meeting at all. And uh, most of the time I could do this. Um, and then eventually they got to the point and I had sent something to um, Brad Glass saying, you know, I can't tell who's speaking and I can't see anybody um, who's speaking during it. So um, if we have access to it, JR, I'd love for you to take a look at it and uh, make some observations to the city on our behalf and on behalf of the residents of the city with regard to compliance. Since you've looked at the law. <laughs> <laughs> And there's a tendency not to do that <laughs> in some of our I've been work, And I've been working with other municipalities for other than to mimic our stuff. If anybody wants to look, look at, the, look at other cities similarly situated, they're following us. <laughs> All right. Ah, oh. cool. <laughs> um, okay. I believe Ms. Frederick has her hand up. Yes, I just wanted to provide a quick update about the pop-up sites. So um, I received a few constituents um, reaching out to me talking about the hotline in that they weren't able to um, get in touch with anybody from Whitney Young and they were on hold for a while. Just so you know, um, Whitney Young did have a flood of calls recently and they have, um, in speaking to the county executive, um, they have staffed up more and the issue should resolve itself shortly. So if you hear any constituent concerns about that, um, they are addressing that and hopefully everything will be back to normal soon. Thank you. 
Can you all still hear me? Yes. I can't. I can't. Uh, we can hear you. See anything? Can you see me? <laughs> no. no. I can see your phone. Okay. Yeah. Just give me. Just give me one second. Um, it's seven p.m. Just to provide you with a time check. Oh yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. That's why I'm trying to push through. Kathy? We're ready, right? We're ready to start. Yes, I'm we not, are. Getting myself in. Kathy, I'm not still finding connected. the recording of the meeting for historical commission. I'm not finding. Okay, thank you. All right. So it is seven. It is seven o'clock, and we are going to begin our Monday, April twentieth, two thousand and twenty, Albany Common Council meeting. Can the clerk please call the roll? Anani. Present. Valerie. Present. Conti. Here. Gauchette. Here. Baby. Here. Farrell. Here. Flynn. Here. Frederick. Here. Poey. Here. Igo. Here. Johnson. Here. 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 Love. Here. O'Brien. Here. Robinson. Present. Danielle? Can you? Danielle? Uh-oh. <laughs> Hello, Danielle? Danielle's on mute. Danielle, hold on. Now. Yes? We couldn't hear you. Oh. The last <laughs> attendance I heard was O'Brien. Was O'Brien? Yes. Robinson said uh, present. We have 15 members present, zero members absent. Thank you. Uh, and can you put up our flag? So at this time, we will say the Pledge of Allegiance and have a quick moment of silence. Can you do that for us, Danielle? Yes, I'm on it. Thank you. One second. Bring it back. There you go. All right. Can everyone join us? Our Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United, of the United States, States, States of America. 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 And to the Republic. To the Republic. Yes. Which it stands. One nation. A nation under God. Under God. Indivisible. Indivisible. Liberty, liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Most moment of silence. Stay on the screen. Thank you. So now we'll move on to our next item of agenda, which is we have two public hearings scheduled for today, this evening. Um, and we do have, I believe, public comment on uh, the first uh, public hearing. Can the clerk please read the ordinance for the public hearing? Am I still on mute? Okay, I'm sorry about that. An ordinance amending paragraph B and paragraph C of part three of chapter 375 and part six of chapter 375 of the code of the city of Albany in relation to the operation of blood plasma centers. Thank you. And there is a public comment. So can the clerk please read the public comment? Um, we have a comment from Celeste Hart, Plasma Donation Center in the city of Albany. Uh, to whom it may concern, as a resident of the city, I would like to publicly support the development of the Plasma Center 
plasma donation centers, especially now, provide a critical <laughs> product to help with litany of diseases and research. Having frequent the dog park nearby, I have no issue either visiting the immediate area or living in a city that has a donation center. Thank you. And that was um, entered by Celeste R. Harp. Oh, thank you. Is that the only public comment we have on this one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the next comment is from okay. Katina Mavadanes. And she's on the line. So if you bear with me one second, I'm going to invite her in. Is Katina in? Yes. Hello. Um, good. Uh, hello, Miss, Miss, how do you pronounce your name? Miss Vodam, Miss Vodamedz? Vavadonis. Vavadonis, how are you doing? This is Common Council President Corey Ellis. Uh, you are on to comment on the public comment period uh, on this. You can only talk about ordinance 33120. Also, uh, public comment, I mean, not public comment, public hearing, excuse me, is different than public comment period. After your remarks, if council members wish to ask you a question, they can do so. Unlike public comment, they can't. But since this is a public hearing, if, if, uh, common, if common council members wish to ask you a question based off your comments, um, they can do so at that time. So with that being said, um, go ahead. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, honorable members, and I want to extend my thanks to Ginny Farrell. I under, uh, excuse me, because I'm running off the two screens. I'm reading my comments off this another screen. I understand that the reason we're revisiting this issue is because of the inability of the Plasma Clinic Developers Council to email or provide public comment in a timely fashion to this body. Let me state once again that there are a number of problems with private plasma clinics in the United States. You're only allowed to sell your plasma two times to a private clinic two times a week. Yet hospitals, the Red Cross, and other nonprofits allow vol voluntary donations every 28 days. These public health entities believe there's a high risk to donor health with too frequent donations. Frequent plasma selling has been associated with suppression of donors' immune systems. In other words, it's quite likely you're going to get sick. And, and indeed, it's highly recommended by many medical professionals that you get a complete blood test every four months if you sell your plasma in order to check your immune system. Do you think the folks at CSL are going to pay for this? And do you want such an enterprise that may have immunocompromised individuals located near a school and public park? In addition, what plasma clinics like CSL give to those who sell their plasma is small change compared to what the private clinics actually receive for the plasma. Some plasma clinics don't even give their clients what was initially promised and instead give debit gift cards which have hidden surcharges. You can Google CSL prepaid cards to get examples of their fee. Not surprisingly, drug dealers often target plasma centers to buy these debit cards at discount so plasma donors can get quick cash. It can be strongly argued then that these clinics exploit the most vulnerable members of our society for their own profit. So until federal legislation is enacted to halt this despicable business, I urge you to approve Ordinance 3.31.20 requiring a thousand foot setback for this blood plasma clinic. The cities of Cleveland, Phoenix, and numerous other small cities have enacted this type of regu regulation. Albany needs to do the same. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And Ms. Madonis, can you state your address just for the record? Sure. 59 Melrose <laughs> Avenue in Albany, New York. Thank you so much for that. Any Thank questions? You. By any council members? Okay. No one's raised their hand. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Um, thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Do you have? Is there yeah. another? I have another comment from Angela yep. Lewin, CEO of Albany Behavioral Health LLC, which reads: I live close to the 900 Central Avenue location where CLS is seeking to locate the plasma center. I do not think that this is a good idea. The 900 Central location is already congested with the relocation of the DMV, which is Department of Motor Vehicle there. 
why the city of Albany, we feel as if we are the dumping ground from which companies give back little because they do not buy here, but I'm assuming she means live here. They leave at the end of the workday. And in addition, a Florida company have no interest in the people of Albany, New York, other than a profit center. This is another example of profits over a predominant minority neighborhood. Plasma centers in general should be located in areas that are industrialized. They bring with them offshoot of individuals who, whose interests are not the interests of residents or quality of life for neighborhoods. These companies know that if they offer immediate dollars for blood, desperate and or poor people will purchase. This is unethical. They do not contribute to building solid employment base for communities. We cannot continue to be silent while folks pollute where we live. We are saying no to this center. Thank you for that. Is that the final public comment? No, we have quite a few public comments. The next one is from Olga Z. Porterfield. And if you bear with me one second, I will pull that one up. Sorry, I keep saying public comment, but comment for this public hearing. <laughs> Olga Z. Porterfield says, I would like to support the Plasma Center proposal in Albany in view of the current pandemic. It would be especially beneficial if this company proposing the center was to assist antibody testing in conjunction with plasma donations. Here is a direct appeal from local hospitals and she references a website in her submission. The website address is on the screen, but I will also read it, www.timesunion.com forward slash news, forward slash article, forward slash Albany Med. She also includes in her comment, as for the previously raised concern about possible exploitation of low income residents, plasma donation is a generally safe procedure and would be much safer than many jobs that the unemployed are now forced to take, example, supermarkets, et cetera. She also provides another web address to support her argument, www.healthline.com forward slash health forward slash donating plasma side effects. I'm not a medical professional, a retired speech language pathologist, but I follow science-based resources. Thank you so much for your attention. Sincerely, Olga Z. Porterfield. We also have public comment from Zachary Simpson, who is with us on the line. We will invite him in momentarily. Okay, thank you. Um, Danielle, do we have, uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, Mr. President. Ms. Mr. Hoey has his hand raised. Mr. Hoey? Yes, I want to find out for Olga, was there an address or did I miss it? That's what I wanted to ask. I did not see an address, but I will uh, go back to the email and re-forward it to the members. I just see a web address. Thank you for that. Is Mr. Simpson on the line? He's uh, queuing up right now. Okay. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Good evening, Mr. Simpson. This is Albany Common Council President Corey Ellis. Uh, you're here with our Common Council members to come to during a public hearing to talk about uh, ordinance. 3.3120. Um, during this public hearing, unlike public comment, after your comments, if council members have questions for you, um, they can ask you a question or two based off of your comments. Um, this is not a public comment, this is public hearing, so that's why the common council members at that time could ask you questions. So with that being said, uh, Mr. Simpson, go right ahead. And can you well, state your address as well, yes, name and address right. for the record? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. Uh, my name is Zachary Simpson. I reside at 175 uh, Homestead Avenue in uh, the city of Albany. I serve as uh, vice president of the Upper Washington Avenue Neighborhood Association. I'm also on the executive committee of Council of Albany Neighborhood Associations. 
I speak tonight in favor of Councilmember O'Brien's resolution calling for use specific standards for blood plasma centers in the city of Albany with a 1,000 foot separation from residential neighborhoods, places of worship, public parks, and schools. Back in December 2017, I was first made aware of a proposed blood plasma center here in Albany, specifically in my neighborhood. I have spent the last 28 months researching blood plasma centers and their significant impacts on surrounding neighborhoods. I produced a voluminous amount of research to both the planning board and the common council, which bolstered not just my concerns, but the concerns of numerous residents of the Upper Washington Avenue neighborhood. Since late 2017, I have followed this issue between the planning board, the Board of Zoning of Appeals, back to the planning board, to the common council, back to the planning board, and then to the Board of Zoning of Appeals, and now back to the planning board. As I stated on this issue before, there are other places in the United States where a thousand foot separations currently exist and are part of the zoning code in those municipalities. Uh, Peoria, Arizona, thousand feet. Uh, Cleveland, Ohio, thousand feet. Avondale, Arizona, 1,320 feet. There's a countywide ordinance in Arundel County, Maryland that calls for a thousand foot separation. Even Phoenix, Arizona calls for 900 feet between plasma centers and residential. Uh, we're not breaking new ground here in Albany by calling for a thousand foot setback from this type of a use, and that is a fact. Now, as some may be aware, the applications by CSL Plasma and the owners of Hannaford Plaza for a conditional use permit and major development plan are scheduled to be heard tomorrow in a planning board public hearing. And they may decide to proceed and approve the applications in spite of tonight's ordinance, potentially passing with the support of a full common council. They may proceed in spite of the common council resolution, which passed 15 to zero, calling upon the planning board to delay consideration of these applications. They may proceed in spite of the Albany County Planning Board issuing an advisory to delay action at this time, and they may proceed in, in spite of the Article 78 against the Board of Zoning Appeals in Hannaford Plaza, in which I'm a named uh, petitioner. So, in light of tonight's public hearing and vote, I would encourage all common council members to participate in tomorrow's planning board hearing or submit written comments. And um, I just want to thank you for your support of this ordinance. And thank you for protecting or protecting our neighborhoods. Thank you, Mr. Simpson. Is there any questions by any council members? Seeing none, thank you, Mr. Simpson. Thank you. Can we the clerk please read the next uh, public comment for public hearing? Uh, we have Jack Guzowicz of 61 Melrose Ave, who's also on the line, and we're about to let him in so that he may speak to his comment. Thank you. Right. Am I good to go? Yes, good evening, Jack. This is Common Council President Corey Ellis. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. And yourself, sir? Good. You are into entered into the public hearing on Ordinance 33120. You can only speak on behalf of that ordinance. Unlike public comment period, after your statements, Common Council members, if they choose to do so, can ask you a question, sir. Uh, so I just wanted you to be aware of that. Uh, with that being said, go right ahead, sir. President. Ellis and honorable members of the council. My name is Jack Gazage. I reside at 61 Melrose Avenue in Albany. I've lived here eight and one half years. I am providing comment regarding uh, this ordinance regarding the code uh, of the city of Albany to re relation to the operation of blood plasma centers. I support the passage of this proposal. Blood plasma centers should not be closer than 1,000 feet to residential areas and schools, places of worship, et cetera. There are, I'm told, 165 other locations in the city of Albany that might be better suited for the location of such a center. I also know from my background in public health that there are public health safety uh, and sanitation concerns with the operations of some of these centers in the past. So I thank you for this opportunity to comment and I respectfully ask the council to act positively on this proposal. Thank you, sir. 
Appreciate that. Any council members have any questions? Seeing none, thank you, sir, for your thank time you. and, and your opinion. Thank you so much. Madam Clerk, next. Yes, the next comment is submitted by Janet Dwyer Stutzman of 226 Euclid Avenue, and it reads, I am writing in support of two ordinances being considered at this evening's meeting. I am support ordinance number 3.31.20MC, as it aligned with my concerns regarding the establishment of a for-profit blood plasma center. This industry is notorious for preying on vulnerable members of our society with the potential for causing considerable harm to their health at a time when our government, every office, including the planning board, should be protecting them. In addition, this business does not meet the zoning regulations for an established shopping center featuring retail stores, having nothing to do with the light manufacturing and everything to do with organic medical products. I would also like to express support for ordinance number 8.41.20 as our present development plans, as I have observed previously, are lacking in very basic requirements reflecting environmental advances that elsewhere are becoming common building practices. It is imperative that we waste no time, particularly on the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, to we establish guidelines today to protect our environment. Thank you. And that's from Janet Dwyer Stutzman, 226 Euclid Avenue. Thank you so much. Is there any further uh, public comments on a public hearing? Yes, we have a comment submitted by John D. Wright, who is the principal attorney. And this is in response to the ordinance. It reads, dear common council members, this firm represents the owners of the Hannaford Plaza. My clients have an application pending before the planning board to establish a CSL plasma location in the Hannaford Plaza, which is located at 900 Central Avenue in the city of Albany. I write on behalf of my clients to oppose ordinance 3.31.20 MC as amended. First, I would note that this litigation legislation, excuse me, if passed would be void and invalid from its inception for most of the reasons set forth in my February 21st, 2020 letter to the council, which is attached to this email as attachment one. The ordinance is void under the city's own USDO. Notably, the city's own uniform sustainable development ordinance requires zoning text amendments to be submitted to the chief planning official, even if the proposed amendment comes from a common council member. Moreover, the USDO also requires that the proposed text amendment be submitted to the planning board for review and recommendation. While Councilman O'Brien attended planning board meetings concerning similar legislation to what is proposed, he has not followed the city's own requirements for zoning text amendments. Moreover, the version of the proposed amendment that the Common Council is considering this evening has never been submitted to the chief planning official or the planning board. The law, if passed, would be void from its inception and unenforceable. As I have stated previously, the public opposition to this ordinance is based upon speculation and misinformation. Most of the public opposition is based on whether blood plasma collection should be permitted anywhere rather than any reliable evidence that there are external impacts associated with blood plasma centers. Natural. Information supplied by Mr. O'Brien and his cohorts is reminiscent of anti-vaccination propaganda, which permeates the internet and despite its rejection by most of the medical community is very easy to find. In reality, blood plasma is significantly beneficial to the medical community and those with blood diseases. Moreover, blood plasma is being sought for use in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. O'Brien is likely to highlight any of the benefits of blood plasma, including its current use in developing COVID-19 treatments. Several of the attachments listed at the end of this letter demonstrate the benefits of blood plasma and also demonstrate that the information presented by Mr. O'Brien is not necessarily evident in the proposed exemption for the American Red Cross, whose business model is founded on the sale of donated blood. 
The notion that the American Red Cross does not generate revenue via blood donations is simply false, but it's quite clearly a foundational principle of Mr. O'Brien's proposed amendment. I would urge the Common Council to, instead of reciting a list of headlines without any supporting information, actually perform its research rather than relying on a vocal minority of residents who have provided the Common Council with incorrect or incomplete information. No setback is justified. The most problematic part of the proposed ordinance is a 1,000 foot setback. There is no rational basis on the record for a 1,000 foot setback. The city does not ban any type of blood drawing, drawing use in such a manner, and there is no reason to impose any such setback in blood plasma offices. There simply are no external impacts on a neighborhood as this use takes 100% indoors. This use is absolutely nothing like other uses in the USDO, which imposes a large setback. For example, he lists marijuana dispensaries and adult entertainment. The city's own chief planning official, aided by research by planning staff, recommended that blood plasma centers be permitted as a conditional use with no setback. In passing the ordinances written, the Common Council will be siding with generalized objections based upon unreliable evidence rather than its own professional staff. Next heading, conflict of interest. Moreover, I would draw the Council's attention to the case of Titan Concrete versus the Town of Kent, 63 MIC 3D 564 Putnam County sub CT 219 in which the court invalidated a local law due to one town board member's conflict of interest and failure to fully recuse herself. Here, Mr. O'Brien is named plaintiff in a case against the Board of Zoning Appeals concerning the permissibility of blood plasma centers. His integral involvement in the drafting, sponsoring, introduction, and discussion of the ordinance is a clear conflict of interest and fundamentally taints the public process. The ordinance if passed this evening would be invalid based upon the Titan Concrete case and the eternal, Attorney General's opinion referenced therein. The ordinance should not be acted upon until Mr. O'Brien's involvement has been completely removed. Next heading, the proposed amendment is invalid for multiple other reasons. The council is also aware that it passed a similar ordinance in February of 2020. That ordinance was vetoed by the mayor. In her veto message to the Common Council, the mayor identified several de defects in the ordinance. Most of the same defects still exist, including the failure to comply with the USDO. No action should be taken by the Common Council until all of the defects have been cured stating, I'm sorry, starting with the council's compliance with its own USDO. In closing, we urge the Common Council to take time to research this issue and not act on innuendo, suggestion, and falsehoods. Um, I have attached the following to assist the Common Council in its deliberations. He references attachment two, which is a copy of the mayor's veto letter. He also references article three. Attachment three, which is an article regarding New York's use of blood plasma to combat COVID. Attachment four, federal guidance regarding paying donors for whole blood, not just plasma. Attachment five, Miami Times article detailing the sale of all blood components. Attachment six, article regarding American Red Cross sale of whole blood. Attachment seven, flyer concerning CSL plasma support of the fight against immune thrombocytopenic purpura, ITP, attachment eight, brief biographies of plasma recipients and why plasma is life-saving, attachment nine, matter of Titan Concrete Inc. versus the town of Kent. I thank the, I thank the Common Council for its time and consideration and trust that it will undertake the appropriate research and deliberations on the proposed ordinance and that's sincerely submitted by John D. Wright, attorney at Bartlett, Ponte, Stewart and Rhodes, PC. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, Councilman Ballerin has his hand up. Is Mr. Wright here for us to be able to ask him any questions? Because some of the statements are misleading at best. Um, well, you can, you can comment on his statements for the record since he is not here, but if you wanted to get on for the record, you can do that, sir. For the record, I want to state again that the, when they when the, they cite what's being done right now with 
plasma from donors, one, it's being plasma that's being donated from people who have survived from the Holocaust. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
what would be prohibited is if I had any commercial interest either in that blood plasma or in their competitors or uh, in another landlord who might want to house it and that if I sought to make uh, a personal profit from it. I am assuring this council tonight and I'm assuring the world I have no such private interest. My involvement when in that lawsuit was the same as the other five people and the same as the 46 people who signed a petition in support of this legislation. And that is strictly uh, the quality of life uh, and whether our uh, code was being properly interpreted. I did also want to address one other thing which he raised, and he said that the council uh, has no authority to even enact an ordinance uh, regarding USDL unless it's prior approved by the planning board. And as uh, Alfredo has pointed out, uh, the planning board did indeed uh, two years ago approve the concept of an ordinance setting boundary limits around uh, a, a blood plasma center. Um, there were different limits than we choose to uh, set. But um, there's a reading of the, and this appeared also in the comments of, uh, of the Corporation Council, both in front of the Planning Board and in front of us. They are reading section 375.5E uh, of the uh, USDO, which, um, you know, historically the council always referred proposed amendments to the planning department if they involved zoning. When we enacted the new code, we kept that process in, but we never intended to uh, totally abdicate our authority to write zoning code, which is <clears throat> for in the charter of the city of Albany section 401 that is the council that has the authority to adopt amend or repeal local laws ordinances resolutions and rules and regulations in the exercise of its functions powers and duties so we never relinquish that we couldn't relinquish it even if we wanted to it's part of our inherited it's part of our inherent authority under the foundation documents of this city and also of the um, General Cities Law, Section 19. And it's kind of interesting because what they are doing, they are misreading uh, that section of the USDO where we made it the formality to refer over to the planning director. Not that we were saying that he had to approve, but we asked him to review. The very next paragraph in the USDO after that, in case there was any uh, ambiguity, clearly says amending the zoning map in the text of this USDO is a matter committed to the legislative discretion of the Common Council, end of quotations. So this whole argument that we haven't submitted it properly to the planning director is bogus. We have, it's without that argument is without merit, and I feel quite confident in voting on this. There was one other question that I didn't want to address, and that was the issue that uh, Marissa Francini raised in her uh, belated note to us, in which she's saying that we can't make it retroactive and the Court of Appeals had ruled on this where she didn't issue a citation. Even if that is true, and I'm not conceding that it is because I that case has never been made available to us. Uh, we have a severability clause in the ordinance. So even if they found that, oh no, you couldn't make it retroactive to January, although that has been a common practice in the New York State Legislature anyway. So it seems strange to me that something that is so embedded in our legislative practices is now suddenly been overruled unless it's a selective reading of whatever that particular ruling is. So uh, we have a severability section in the proposed ordinance that if that does become uh, law because of a court decision, it still doesn't invalidate 
uh, the passage of 99% of what's in this ordinance. So I just wanted to make that comment to his comments. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Um, Madam Clerk. I have another comment. Bear with me one second, sir. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> This comment is from Maureen McCauley. It's regarding the CSL Collection Center. UWANA learned at the end of 2017 that CSL had applied to the planning board for approval to use the former dollar store in Hannaford Plaza as a plasma collection center. CSL then characterized its operation as a medical office. That characterization was to change many times, and at one time, hair salon was used. As we became familiar with what CSL is, a corporation with over $21 billion in sales in 2017, projected to be over $24 billion by 2024, and some 200-plus plasma collection centers in the United States, we also became familiar with the effects of these collection centers on residential neighborhoods increased crime, need for increased police intervention, resultant change in neighborhood dynamics, and detailed them for the planning board. Zoning offsets of 1,000 feet or more in U.S. cities, as well as crimes reported, were tracked and, I believe, submitted to the city common, I'm sorry, the city council committee, as well as the planning board. That recently included a stabbing rampage in a collection center in Virginia, a stabbing that resulted in death of the victim in Georgia, and shots fired in a collection center in Michigan in which gunfire was exchanged with policemen. My neighborhood is 300 plus feet from the proposed CSL collection center in Hannaford Plaza. There is a park within 300 to 500 feet that has a playground for toddlers and a spray pad in the summer for young children. Elementary school children use the park for recess. My neighborhood is a walking neighborhood. Because Hannaford is within walking distance, many seniors walk there to shop. We want all of those activities to continue. We do not want to import crime. The designation, the CSL Collection Center, as light manufacturing has no basis. There is no manufacturing going on there. Plasma is sent to logistics centers where it is stored for 60 days before being shipped to Australia for fractionation. That's where manufacturing takes place, not in the collection center. The council ordinance is a reasonable way to allow this collection center to do business while shielding residential areas, schools, parks, and places of worship from harmful, harmful secondary effects. It is my understanding that with the offset, there are some 100 locations in Albany where CSL could set up for business. I don't understand why CSL is operating as if the problematic Hannaford Plaza site is the only place where it could locate its plasma collection site. Thank you, Danielle. Um, Judy, Do uh, Ms. Doshe? Can we unmute her? Judy, we can't hear you, hold on. I thought I could unmute. I've um, go ahead. Hold on. To being um, the case that was cited in Miss Frangini and the and the uh, attorney's um, uh, letter uh, just now. I was reading that online. A couple things I want to observe about it. Um, uh, this is the one that uh, alleges a conflict of interest in that um, the the law will be void because of Mr. O'Brien's involvement, both in the lawsuit and in uh, this uh, particular uh, case. First of all, I wanna note that it is merely a Supreme Court case out in- um, uh, Miss, Miss Duche? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, would, I would prefer if we hold those for when the uh, ordinance comes up for a vote. Um, I think that that's more appropriate at that time. So we can move on to our next public hearing. Uh, so can well, you please, please hold well, those to although, public comment? Although you were, uh, th I, I was trying to chime in to comment on uh, the attorney's letter, mm -hmm. and other people were commenting on various aspects of that letter. So that's why I thought it was appropriate for me. Yeah, to that, yeah, that was the attorney letter, public comment. But this is commenting about 
our, our, our corporate counsel response. And I think that's more appropriate when we talk about the ordinance at that time. No, actually, um, when um, Danielle uh, read the letter specifically from that attorney, he oh, he did have it. He did. He did. He raised the conflict. Yes, he did. Which is why I then went looking for the. Oh, the, and you wanted to gotcha. Okay. Well, I, I I I understand. Yep, I will allow it. Go ahead. That's, okay. Yep. So so I just want to comment. It's a it's a Supreme Court case. It's not an appellate division case. It's not a court of appeals case. Uh, it very specifically says that when it comes to conflict of interest issues, you have to review it on a case by case basis. Um, and the other thing I want to point out is in that particular case, the uh, town board member that was involved in those decisions was a dues paying member of a home ownership association that directly abutted the property. So in terms of looking at things on a case by case basis, I just wanted to share those observations about this particular case uh, that they are citing as um, um, you know, making this void uh, uh, because they've determined that Mr. <laughs> O'Brien has a, a has a conflict of interest. Conflict. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shea. Um, the clerk, Madam Clerk. That concludes the um, public hearing comments for ordinances three thirty one twenty. Thank you. Since there is no more public comment. Uh, this public hearing on ordinance 33120 is closed and we'll be moving on to our second ordinance. Uh, I mean, our second public hearing on resolution 213120R. Can the clerk please read the resolution? Yes, President. Resolution of the Common Council consenting to the remission of interest and penalties regarding 2018 property taxes due to the City of Albany for the property located at 286. 288 Lark Street and requesting that the Albany County Legislature pass legislation authorizing such cancellation of interest and penalties. Was there any public comment on this resolution? There is no comment um, specific to that resolution. Okay. Well, uh, since there is no public comment on this, on this resolution, public hearing for resolution 2131 20R is closed at this time. And now we'll be moving on to our public comment period. Yes, sir. And I do have some public comments to share. Mm -hmm. There one second while I get them ready. Okay. Okay, this comment was sub submitted by S Sandy Steubing of 44 Summit Ave. Please pass the Buy Local, Grow Local Resolution 364220R. The 50th anniversary of Earth Day on April 22nd, 2020 is a terrific time to announce this public awareness campaign. Buy Local, Grow Local is based on three principles, revenue, more for the city, and increase taxes from thriving local businesses, resilience from the global just-in-time supply line. Thank you for your consideration. Reduction in greenhouse gases for the health of people and planet. And then reduction in greenhouse gases for the health of people and planet appears twice. The next comment has been submitted by Tina Lieberman of 30 Aspen Circle. Happy Earth Week. I wholeheartedly support the Buy Local, Grow Local resolution of 364220R, sponsored by Councilmember Anani, which will be voted upon at the 42020 Common Council meeting. On April 2nd, the Sustainability Advisory Committee unanimously agreed to recommend this public information campaign to the city's administration as well. This resolution would have many benefits for our city. Among them are increased revenue for local businesses and therefore the city itself, enhanced resilience to protect us from dependence on unreliable global food supply chains, reduction of green, greenhouse gas emissions for the health of 
people and planet, restoration of local soils, encouragement of backyard and community composting. I encourage the city to establish an online resource for the purpose of relaying buy local, grow local information and resources to residents. This is such a positive step forward in these uncertain times. Thank you, Tina Lieberman, Chair of the Sustainability Advisory Committee. Next, we have a comment for, from Susan Longton, 15 Beekman Street. Buy local, yes, certainly. It's very important to buy local. Give somebody local a job. Second, the, the, the next comment is submitted by Diana Wright, who's a seventh ward resident. I would like to officially support the Buy Local, Grow Local initiative that is being sponsored by council member Anani and supported by several others. As the owner of Food Scraps 360 and a member of Zero Waste and Pause, I see this initiative growing exponentially with the support of our environmental advocates. We already have over 200 supporters of our Facebook page in less than a week. Together with the City of Albany, we can educate and support more community and backyard gardens, do videos on how to grow potatoes and other vegetables and fruits, container gardens for small yards or apartment dwellers, how to compost and where to bring food scraps if you elect not to compost yourself, how to recycle. We have resources for environmentally sustainable products like bamboo utensils, sporks that can be carried in a pocket or purse to reduce plastic utensils, reusable shopping bags, and most importantly, a resource guide to businesses who are locally owned and operated. Products that are produced in Albany, the Capital District, and New York State, and connect the dots between CO2 emissions and distance travel for the things we buy. Furthermore, supporting our local economy boosts our economy and creates a self-sustainable community which can better weather ever increasing situations like floods, drought, and pandemics that are caused by climate change, creating a network of goods and services that are local both protects us from extreme situations caused by climate change and helps to alleviate the cause of climate change. I would like to submit a public comment asking the Common Council to support the Buy Local, Grow Local Resolution 364220R, sponsored by Councilmember Anomni. This resolution would have many benefits, and they go on to Bennett to bullet them, increase revenue for local businesses and therefore the city, enhance resilience to protect us from dependence on unreliable global food supply chains, reduction in greenhouse gas emissions for the health of people and planet restoration of local soils through encouragement of backyard and community composting, encouraging the city to establish an online resource for the purpose of relaying buy local, grow local information and resources to residents. In this challenging time of the pandemic, we are all fighting, finding, excuse me, new ways of living our lives, which are naturally more locally focused as we spend our days at home. Let us build upon this localized attention with a robust buy local, grow local public awareness campaign. It is a positive step forward in these uncertain times. And again, that was submitted by Diana Wright, who is a seventh ward resident. And that is all I have for public comment. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Now we're moving on to uh, approval of previous minutes, the previous meeting, uh, Mr. Kimbrough. Yes, uh, Mr. President, uh, I make a motion to approve meeting minutes from the March 26th, 20 uh, meeting and also the April 6th, 20 Thank meeting. you. Thank you. Is there a second on that motion? Second. There's a second. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Approval of minutes approved. Moving on to local laws. Mr. Kimbrough? Local laws on the agenda are held. Thank you, sir. Moving on to any uh, standing committee's report. Mr. Conti. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. The Council Operations Committee will be meeting on April 27th. 
uh, to consider a local law E of 2020. Thank you, Mr. Conti. Any more uh, uh, committee, standing committee reports? Okay, seeing there's none. Um, moving on to ordinances, hell. Mr. O'Brien. Can we unmute Mr. O'Brien? Where is he? Is he there? I don't... Oh, hello? Yep, we can hear you now, Mike. Go ahead. Uh, I notice Ordinance 33120 as amended, and I'm asking for a vote on that, and also asking for co sponsors. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Can the clerk please read? Clerk, please read the ordinance. An ordinance amending paragraph B and paragraph C, <laughs> part three of chapter 375 and part six of chapter 375 of the Code of the City of Albany in relation to the operation of blood plasma centers. Thank you. Is there further discussion on the ordinance? Mr. Yes. O'Brien. Okay. Um, I'm not going to belabor this. We've had a long discussion, um, and I agree with uh, the points made by my fellow council members. Uh, I did receive a letter uh, from Hyde Clark. He's the president of the Upper Washington Avenue Neighborhood Association, and he also happens to be a land use planning attorney with a lot of experience in the laws governing zoning and uh, and land use. Uh, I'm not going to go into the issue that he raised with regard to the alleged conflict of interest, because I think we've already covered that, but I do want to read a portion of it. He says, the issue is whether the proposed law may apply to pending applications, because we did put a pendency clause right in the ordinance. As an applicant for a proposed land use, you do not automatically have a vested right in a certain law or regulation that is in effect at the time you applied. Very often in land use and zoning law, municipalities are not aware of uses that may need to be regulated until they have received an application. The result is that the land use applicant may start an application process under one version of the law, and that law may be changed prior to investing significant money in the physical development of that proposal. If this law is effective prior to the applicant obtaining a vested right in the project, in other words, finally being issued a building permit to modify it, then of course it can be applied to pending applications that have previously been received. The current proposal on Hannaford Plaza does not have vested rights under the current USDO or the BZA determination. Whether you are in favor or in opposition to the proposed blood plasma facility, and it has been clear from the start that the USDO did not consider this a proposed use. It is within the Common Council's legislative authority to adopt land use regulations and the Common Council will continue to amend the USDO as new uses are proposed that have not otherwise been regulated. And I just wanted to also note, we, uh, a point has been made by our Corporation Council, which I think is not valid. They argue uh, that uh, Section 375E sub 24 mandates that the planning director have absolute control over whatever we send him. He has virtually verbatim authority over whatever concepts of uh, changing the USDO that we might want to pass. That is clearly not true as, the very, as it's contradicted by the city charter, section 401. It's contradicted by um, uh, municipal law, um, which I have a site on, but 
uh, and it's contradicted by the very next paragraph in the USDO, 375.5E, uh, 24C, which clearly says amending the zoning map and text of the USDO is a matter committed to the legislative discretion of the Common Council. And this is also upheld in General Cities Law, Section 19. So I think we have, you know, been given a lot of, you know, the mayor had some valid uh, concerns in her first message to us. I think they have been addressed. And I think uh, our, our legislative council, um, JR, would attest to that. And I, am at, I think this is a very reasonable piece of legislation. I'm asking, I hope that everybody will vote for it. And I am asking for co-sponsorship. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> I'm gonna keep this short. Um, I just say in, in, um, in politics, when people speak, generally um, it's, it's um, the uh, elected official's responsibility to embrace that. And um, I think that we have clearly um, heard people uh, speak up against the ideal of this um, plasma center being um, a thousand uh, feet within schools, parks, so, um, and, and when I think about the uh, letter that the uh, lawyer wrote, I'm almost certain that he wouldn't write the same type of lawyer, uh, letter for a plasma center to be near, uh, within a thousand feet of his home. And um, if you can, if you can't practice what you uh, write down on paper, it really isn't worth anything. So I, I think that um, if you want to look at um, the ill effects of these type of businesses, if you go down in a uh, second war, they're surrounded by my place of employment. My kids see it to and from school. They see it to and from the store. So um, I think that we have an opportunity here to uh, say no to profit over the people. So I will be supporting um, the resolution tonight and I would like to be a co-sponsor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Hoey. Yes, I also would like to be a co-sponsor and fully support this legislation. I've been uh, concerned ever since starting on the Common Council about the USDO and the stories I heard, and it happened in the past, how it was rushed. We have problems with it that we need to fix. And it's been more than two years that we were supposed to revisit and fix certain parts of it. So um, I'm fully supportive of this and I hope everybody else will be. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hoey. Any further discussion? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Anani. Yes. Okay. Valerie. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Conti. Oh, uh, yes. Doshe. Yes. Fahey. Yes. Farrell. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Glenn. Yes, co-sponsor. Frederick. Yes. Bowie. Yes, co-sponsor, please. I go. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Johnson. Yes. Kimbra. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Love. Yes, co-sponsor, please. O'Brien. Yes. Robinson. Yes, co-sponsor. 15 in the affirmative. Or Johnson, I just want to confirm, you want a co-sponsor? Yes, he's on the record. Yes, he does. Ordinance passes. Moving on to resolutions introduced. Moving on to the first resolution by Human Resources Committee, Mr. Robinson. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I noticed uh, resolution 33.42.20R and ask for its introduction and passage. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Can the clerk please read the resolution? Yes, sir. Resolution of the Common Council appointing Natisha Alexander as a member of the Commission on Human Rights. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Hold it, Ms. Farrell. Ms. Farrell has her hand up. Ms. Farrell? 
Uh, I just wanted to um, thank our chair for the process that we went through for that. Um, and I also wanted to really thank everybody that applied for um, these positions. Um, I'm really totally blown away by the two people who are on the, who are um, both Ms. Alexander and Mr. Jackson and appreciate them being willing to serve. And um, I'm, they're really incredible. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Farrell. Further discussion? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Yes. Anani. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Valorant. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Auntie? Yes. Doshet. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Fahey. Yes. Farrell? Yes, co-sponsor, please. Flynn. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Frederick. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Hoey. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Igo. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Johnson. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Kimbra. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Love. Yes, co-sponsor. O'Brien. Yes, co-sponsor. Robinson. Yes. 15 in the affirmative. Thank you. Mr. Conti? Can uh, you just ask, uh, please add me as a co-sponsor. Okay, we'll do. thank you. Yes, sir. So resolution passes. Uh, Mr. Robinson. Yes, Mr. President, I noticed resolution 34.42.20R and ask for its introduction and passage. Thank you. Can a clerk please read the resolution? Yes, sir. Resolution of the Common Council appointing Trayvon Jackson as a member of the Commission on Human Rights. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, can a clerk please call a roll? Oh. Wait. One second, President. I see uh, Council Robinson. But yeah. he didn't know how to raise his hand on okay, Mr. Robinson. <laughs> find the raise hand button in the time. Uh, <laughs> okay. Go ahead, um, Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Mr. President. Um Bishop uh Desmond Tutu uh once said that if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have uh chosen the side of the oppressor. Uh if an elephant has its foot on the tail of a mouse and you say that you are neutral, the mouse will not appreciate your neutrality. Uh, I'm thankful for the Commission on Human Rights and the work that they do in advocating for the rights of the residents and the city of Albany. Every individual on the Commission chose not to remain neutral, but to volunteer and dedicate their time and energy to improve the quality of life uh, for the residents here in the city of Albany. Uh, the two candidates, Ms. Alexander and Mr. Jackson, uh, committed extensive resumes that will qualify them for any position but the reason why I chose, and I believe that the committee chose them, because these are two in individuals who communicated their passion, and they ex have experience in breaking down barriers in their own communities. Uh, so it is uh, with great honor and great pleasure that I welcome these two uh, individuals, Ms. Jack, Mr. Jackson and Ms. Uh, Alexander, to the commission. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, can a clerk please call the roll? Yes, sir. Anani. Yes, co-sponsor, please. <clears throat> Ballerin. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Conti. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Doshet. <clears throat> yes, co-sponsor, please. <clears throat> Baby. <clears throat> yes. Farrell. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Flynn. Yes, co-sponsor. Frederick. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Mr. Holly. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Igo. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Johnson. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Kimbra. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Love. Yes, co-sponsor. O'Brien. Yes, co-sponsor. Robinson. Yes. 
15 in the affirmative. Resolution passes. Continuing on with resolutions introduced, Mr. O'Brien. 54220 and ask for its passage. Can the clerk please read the resolution? Yes, sir. Resolution of the Common Council appointing Jessica Wilcox to the Cable Television Public Education and Government Access Oversight Board. Thank you. Is there a discussion on the resolution? Yes, just briefly. Um, I just a few minutes ago received a text from uh, Zach Simpson who said that he had submitted for public comment uh, on this, uh, but somehow, I don't know, it, it got slipped. Um, and I assume it's too late to call him in at this time. But I uh, just wanna remark that um, Zach is on the board. He's well acquainted with the work of Jessica. She came to our uh, caucus a few weeks ago uh, and um, as a member of the uh, of the ad hoc uh, cable uh, committee, um, uh, Alfredo and Tom Howie and myself and the Mary Rosak, the board chair, sat down with the applicants and were impressed with Jessica's uh, intelligence, her willingness to work uh, on this uh, project, and. Uh, uh, her basically her credentials. She's an attorney, and she has a lot has had has had a lot of community involvement. So um, I would ask, uh, you know, uh, for a vote, and whomever wants to co-sponsor, I would appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien, and our apologies to Mr. Simpson that we missed his comments on this. Um, Mr. Holy. Yeah, I just want to back up what um, my uh, colleague Councilman O'Brien said. Um, Jessica did a very good job in the interview with the subcommittee, a uh, very positive, upbeat, and, you know, in the past, this committee has had problems, and we feel that her presence on the board will make it a lot more smoother, and I think they'll get a lot done. So I hope everybody will vote yes and also co-sponsor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ballard. I also wanted to speak since I, I was on, on, on the committee. We had three great applicants. Uh, we really were very proud of the fact that uh, we had uh, so many to choose from. It really uh, made the decision very difficult. Uh, uh, but we did have we did have unanimous consent uh, on on uh, and just on moving forward with Jessica's. Uh, so I think she's going to be a great asset to the board and. Uh, I look forward to seeing the work that uh, comes out of the board in the next few years. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? I got a vote. Yes. Yes, sir. Bear with me one second while we unmute everyone. Okay. Anani. Yes, co sponsor, please. Ballard. Yes, co sponsor, please. Conti. Yes, co sponsor. Joshua. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Bayhu. Yes. Farrell. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Flynn. Yes, co-sponsor. Frederick. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Hoey. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Igo. Yes, co-sponsor, please. Johnson. 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 Gone. Kimbra. Yes, co sponsor, please. Love. Yes, co sponsor. O'Brien. Yes. Robinson. Yes, co sponsor, please. Is Mr. Johnson back on the line? No, he's not. 14 in the affirmative. Resolution passes. Uh, Mr. Anani. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I notice resolution 364220R and ask for his introduction and passage. Thank you, sir. Can the clerk please read the resolution? Resolution of the Common Council encouraging all residents of Albany to buy local and grow local. Mr. Anani. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, you know, in the midst of COVID-19, um, this crisis has exposed uh, a lot of disparities as relates to health disparities, education disparities, but it also has uh, highlighted um, the disparities as relates to businesses and how we support our local uh, businesses. Uh, sm small businesses are the backbone of our city. Um, they are responsible for most of the jobs in our city and are the, uh, make up substantial portion of our city's tax base. Uh, when COVID-19 pandemic broke out, so many of our small businesses were devastated as society worked and continued to work to fight the spread of this disease. However, this crisis will come to an end. And at that end, we as a city should show the support, the same support to our small business community that they have shown to us for years. It is why I urge the passage of this resolution to support a buy local, grow local campaign in Albany. Essentially, by urging the public to support local businesses who are communities resiliency to the crisis, whether through local food production or manufacturing of various goods. This campaign will also encourage better environmental practices because small businesses have a significant smaller carbon footprint than many large stores. And just as importantly, we support local business owners and workers, increase local business revenue, and also broaden our tax base. Through this campaign, uh, we're working with the administration and also Capitalize Albany uh, to create a website that is going to be a webpage to provide helpful links and resources to city residents so they can find local businesses to support and how to's for gardening and composting locally. So far, volunteers of various nonprofit organizations like Red X Center, People of Albany United for Safe Energy and Zero Waste Education Subcommittee are happy to provide links and connect information to the post. Passing this resolution will also be a unique and practical means of demonstrating Albany's support for sustainable economic development that enhances our environment. And that's something that we should encourage as we encourage the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, which is this Wednesday. On a personal note, I wanna thank the Sustainability Committee for voting unanimously in support of this initiative. I wanna give a big shout out to Tina Lieberman and also Stanley Steuben. Um, this crisis, like I said, exposed a lot of disparities. And my mentor always say this, you know, the word crisis in Mandarin could mean two things. It could either mean danger or an opportunity. And I wanna thank all my colleagues who are using this as an opportunity to address some of the disparities and challenges that our city face. Uh, so I urge my colleagues to vote in favor of this resolution in support of a buy local, grow local campaign. It's a win for our local businesses, our workforce, our environment, and overall a win for the city of Albany. And I wanna thank all my colleagues for uh, being co-sponsors on this important resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Uh, Mr. Uh, President, before I call the roll, um, I also want to note for uh, 354220 that Mr. Johnson's intent was to vote yes and also be a co-sponsor. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that, for the record. And for the roll call, Mr. Anani. Yes. Mr. Mr. Ballard? Yes, co-sponsor. Mr. Conti? Uh, yes, I believe we're all co-sponsors. Yes. Yes. Correct. Ms. Dushet? Uh Yes. Ms. Fahey? Yes. Ms. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Ms. Frederick? Yes. Mr. Hoey? Yes. Mr. Igo? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kimbrough? Yes. Ms. Love? 
Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes, co-sponsor, please. 15 in the affirmative. Uh, resolution passes. Moving on to resolutions held, Mr. Conti. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I notice resolution 21.31.20R request passage and a roll call vote thereon. Can the clerk please read the resolution? Yes, Mr. President. Resolution of the Common Council consenting to the remission of interest and penalties regarding 18 property taxes to the City of Albany for the property located at 286 and 288 Lark Street and requesting that the Albany County Legislature pass legislation authorizing such cancellation of interest and penalties. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Anani. Yes. Dallin. Yes. Conti. Yes. Doshet. Yes. Fahey. Yes. Farrell. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Frederick. Yes. Coey. Yes. Igo. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Kimbrough. Yes. Love? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Robinson? Yes. 15 in the affirmative. Uh, resolution passes. Is there any miscellaneous or unfinished business? Seeing none, Mr. Kimbrough. Uh, yes, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those, all those in favor? Aye. Meeting Aye. adjourned. Good night, people. Be safe. Good night. Good night. Good night.